I'llBeHonest.com. My name is Isla and I'm 20 years old. About five years ago, in October of 2004, I was diagnosed with a cancer called Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, during that time, I was just a freshman in high school. I was a part of the marching band. I played trombone. I was just, just living like any other teenager would. I just, I loved having fun, being with my friends, and just to be able to enjoy myself. But when I got cancer, it was as if my life came to a sudden halt. I could no longer do the things that I love doing. I could no longer um, participate in the marching band or really go out anywhere apart from the hospital or my house because um, due to the chemotherapy treatments I'd be going through, um, my, my immune system would basically be really weak and deficient. Um, a lot of my days consisted in being in the hospital and feeling really dreadfully sick and nauseated, fevers, chills, just everything that comes with the side effects of having to undergo chemotherapy. I, I just, I felt isolated and I couldn't help but question, like any, many of us who would question if we were to get a disease, I kept asking, like, God, why me? I'm a good person, I'm not as bad as the next guy. This, this sort of stuff, how come it doesn't happen to, to bad people and, and, and why does it happen to such a good person like me? And so, but the, in reality, I wasn't a good person and I knew that from deep within, but you know, in my own self-righteousness, I thought, well, you know, I'm not as bad as that murderer or that rapist, so how come I got cancer of all people? I never, I never imagined myself getting a disease that would almost, well, could possibly cost my life. I grew up with um, my parents being divorced since I was just a child, and my dad's side being mainly Muslim, and my, Christian, my, my mother's side being mainly Christian. And, um, but for some reason, I just, I, at the time, I had favored Islam, and it probably had a lot to do with um, the influence I had from under my grandmother and my dad um, towards Islam. So, strangely enough, I actually ended up develop, developing just, just an intense hatred towards Christianity, and I really didn't have any reason for it. I wasn't treated badly in the church, nothing like that. I just, just for whatever reason, I particularly hated Christians and I hated Jesus. I, I hated him. In general, I was generally just a, a hateful person. I, I hated without cause. And what's interesting is that Jesus said in, in the book of Matthew that if, if you basically are hating somebody, then you're a murderer at heart. And that's what I was. Um, I was definitely a murderer at heart. So even though I wasn't that murderer I was just mentioning, I was just a murderer at heart, although I never actually physically killed anybody before. Other than my, my sin of, of being hateful, I was also caught in the sin of homosexuality during my middle school years. I used to be a in the closet bisexual, just you know, in my lustful thoughts, and I knew, I knew inside it was wrong because my conscience just kept screaming at me every time I would even think about those thoughts. And when it would be over, I just, I felt so guilty, but I just kept, I kept telling myself, well, um, people say it's okay, there's nothing wrong with it, I could, I could live this way, so I, but, but still in my own embarrassment, I kept it to myself for like the longest time. I never, I never actually revealed it in public because I just felt so ashamed about it, and that was just something my conscience was, was telling me constantly. And, well, previously, before I'd gotten cancer, I actually ended up be, deciding to become Christian, uh, during my seventh grade year in middle school, I, I started going, I started attending church with my cousins and my aunt and my uncle, and I had loved it. But I didn't really know the gospel, which is funny because you would think that churches, well, they're supposed to preach the gospel, right? But the church I was at, they didn't really preach the whole gospel. They preached it, they preached more like a like a prosperity type of message where Christ wants the best for you. He's going to fix your marriage and he's going to heal you of your drugs and blah, 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 blah. And while those things may be true to an extent, that's not the reason why we come to Christ. So during that time, I was coming to Christ for the wrong reasons because I was going through drama with my dad and my stepmom, just crying all the time. I used to be suicidal. I cut myself. I have the marks still on my wrists. 
just during that time, I, I, wanted, I wanted to be happy. I, I didn't want to be sad. So of course I turned to Jesus because I, the message was appealing to me. But what I didn't understand was that I needed to repent of my sins, of my homosexuality, of my hatred, of my thievery as well, because I was also a thief. Even though I wasn't totally a bad kid, I, I, was, still, I was still awful. I was, just, I was wicked, dishonoring my parents, lying, just partaking in those types of things, but nevertheless, just in my blindness, I thought I was still okay. I thought I was worthy to go to heaven, if anything. I had thought I was a Christian and I had this temporary joy thinking that I was saved. But then when the trials and testing came, I quickly fell away. I gave up. I gave up because I, I, I found that God wasn't even answering my prayers to, to fix my family and, and make things better. So I gave up. And then when I had gotten cancer, I thought, wow, God, why are you doing this to me? I, I don't get it. And, and so two years into having this disease, I ended up gaining a boyfriend, which at the time I thought I had just deeply loved. I, he was my world. He was my dreams. I mean, I was ready to give up everything just to be with him. I was even willing to sacrifice my belief in God for his sake because he was beginning to turn all atheistic. And well, I really loved him. So I was willing to put aside my beliefs for him. But unfortunately, in June of 2006, I had come down with something called the shingles. And it's basically a form of, of the chicken pox and it's dreadfully horrible to have. It's very painful. So because I had the shingles, I had to be in the hospital for a couple of weeks. And while I was in the hospital, my boyfriend had broken up with me. And I was so, I was just, my soul was drenched with sorrow. And I, I just thought that I was, I was meant to die. And, and during that time, after having gone through different chemotherapy treatments, I was considered in remission during that time. And that basically means that I was considered cancer free after these treatments. Well, a week after my, bro my boyfriend had broken up with me, my neck was just so swollen with lymph nodes. And I found out that I had cancer again for the second time. And of course I was devastated. I was depressed. I'd just mourn in my bed and lay there and cry just constantly. And I, I just felt like I had nothing to live for. I, I thought I was done for. And, and also, I, it even scared me because I, I, I really didn't know where I was going to go when I die. But then, in, in my heart, I just, I just sort of started crying out. I can't exactly say that I was crying out to God directly, but because I, I didn't know who God was. So, but I was just, just kind of crying out and asking, you know, why am I here? What's my purpose in life? What's the meaning of life? Why is this happening? And just, I began to ponder and I remember sitting on my bed and just thinking, you know, if it's so easy to be sad all the time and miserable like I am, how come, how come it can't be um, just, just as easy to, to be happy or joyful? And so I, I just continued pondering and pondering these things and I guess you could say knocking at the door of God, just desperately wanting answers and how many times have I prayed in the past God help me God do this God do that and I wouldn't get answers and I didn't understand but it was because of my sin the reason why God wasn't listening to me because he doesn't listen to the prayers of sinners unless you're turning to him for faith and I wasn't doing that I was selfishly asking him to make my life better to make my life more fulfilled but that's not what I needed but in God's grace and in, in God's mercy one night I was just on, I was at my computer desk on the internet talking with a friend and just all of a sudden God answered me. Now I didn't get a visit from an angel or see Jesus on a potato chip, nothing weird, nothing too strange out of the ordinary, but just, I guess you could say God put in my mind, life is meaningless apart from God. And immediately after hearing that, I was filled with this joy of joys, like my eyes were open, like, like Saul and Acts. It says that like scales or blinders came off his eyes, and that's exactly what, it, what was happening to me. And I just, I just felt so lifted by this joy, like this heavy burden, this heavy rock was lifted off my shoulders, and just suddenly everything about Jesus being Savior, it all clicked. It all, it all made sense. I couldn't put it into words at the time, but I just knew and I felt my, my, my soul was free. And immediately I started wanting to read the Bible. I started wanting to go to church. I, because before, before that had happened to me, 
I, I didn't desire to read the Word of God. I, you know, I'd open it every now and then, just look at it for verses, but I, it wasn't really, nothing special about it really seemed to ring to me. And well, but I, I started wanting to read the Bible and I just started going through the Word and just searching and just, I was like, wow, this stuff is amazing. And I, my eyes being open, I, I would look at the world, the creation around me and just see the, the grass and the sky, the birds, just all of life and think, wow, God made this. This is so cool. I never realized how awesome a blade of grass is. Everything was just different, just different. And I, I knew I, I, I was changed. And of course, when I started reading the Word of God, reading the Bible, I, I learned about being born again. And I realized that's what, that's what happened to me. And no one even, like, no man actually came and told me. I didn't, I didn't like pray a prayer or a formula or do a ritual type of thing. But like, I'm like, oh, wow, God, God, God answered me. He really did. And so I ended up attending church again, that same church out of my own ignorance. I was going to again with my cousins and uh, I, I had loved it. But then slowly God started teaching me and, and growing me in biblical theology. And I, I started to understand some of the doctrines that that church was preaching wasn't, wasn't according to scripture. You see, they would be cherry picking verses or um, taking stuff out of context mainly to fit their own personal interpretation. And we gotta be careful when we do that. Actually, we shouldn't do that because we should be reading the scripture in context, reading it as the author intended and not applying our own personal thing because I think that's why we get so many different denominations and, and different sort of doctrines because people cherry pick things and they, they purposely contort it and twist it to fit their own interpretation. Well, one night I was, I was just at the time I ended up being really active with my youth group and all. Upon reading through the scriptures, I found that a lot of what we were doing, a lot of the, a lot of the hype and um, just just how the services were being conducted didn't seem very, very Christ-like, and that really concerned me. And I ended up hearing off um, what was called Ray of the Master Radio with Todd Friel about how. He, he, was, he was reading an article by a fellow named Mark Havel about being slain in the spirit. And when I heard this, um, this radio session, I thought, you know, my heart dropped because I, I was involved with that very thing. I thought, wow, this isn't from God. And of course, you know, I just examined the scriptures and I found that truly it wasn't. Thanks be to God that he, he ended up pulling me out of that movement because I found that I was just relying too much on my feelings, relying on feeling something feeling, I guess, the Holy Spirit is what I thought, and not really relying by faith and not relying by what the scriptures say. And so I felt that that really was holding me back from my, my, my Christian walk with the Lord. I still can't believe that God would even dare save a wretch as myself. I don't deserve it. I'm not good. I'm, I'm terrible. We, we all are. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We've all broken His commandments. We've all sinned against Him. And only, only you would know the things that you've personally done against God. And all those things were personal offenses against Him. We deserve hell because we sinned against an infinitely holy being. And God is just. He's a just judge. Yes, He's loving, but a loving judge can't just pardon a criminal on no basis. He's just. So He must, he must execute justice. And that's exactly why God had to send Jesus, His Son. That's why Jesus had to live the perfect life that I couldn't fulfill and that you couldn't fulfill. He lived perfectly. He kept the full law of God. He never once sinned. And He died on the cross, bearing our sins. The Bible says that God the Father poured His wrath on the Son. Jesus basically took the punishment that was meant for you and was meant for me. And when He died and buried, and on the third day He rose again, He forever feeded death and sin. He satisfied the wrath of God. He satisfied it, and He drank that, that cup of wrath for me. And if He would have never answered me back when I, when I was battling through cancer, He would still be just. He would still be just if I went to hell because I deserved it. I truly did. But now He, he saved me by His grace. Again, not because I'm a good person, not because I, I went and I got baptized or said a prayer, but because I trust in Jesus alone. I trust and I turn from my sin, unlike I did when I was a hypocrite Christian at the time. And I am by no means perfect. I stumble, I fall at times. 
but the Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But I no longer want to be living for myself. I, I'm changed because Christ has changed me. He's given me a new heart with new desires, and he'll do the same for you if you look to him, you trust in him, and you repent of your sins, and just trust in Christ alone. He is the one who has the power to save. He is the Lord of Lords and the, kings of, and the King of Kings. He is my all in all. And I'm, I'm trusting in him every step of the way. And even as of now, I'm still battling cancer. And I must say that despite going through all to, to these different kinds of so-called faith healers and crusades and not getting healed, I'm so thankful God never healed me of cancer. I'm so thankful because I would have been robbed of the many glorious moments I've had with the Lord. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 21, that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Like I once was, I thought I was a Christian during my middle school years. I, I thought I was saved, I thought I was going to heaven. But the truth of the matter was, I wasn't. Because not only was I still relying on my own works, relying on my own good deeds to get me there, I didn't truly know Christ. And that's exactly what Christ is saying to those who are professing Christians, who think that they're saved, who because they prayed some prayer or they did some good deed, they, they think they're gonna go into heaven. But in reality, they're not, because they don't truly know the one who can save them. And I wanted to read that as a warning to anyone who may be thinking that they're a Christian. Please, the Word of God says in Corinthians to examine yourself, test yourself to see whether or not you truly are in the faith. Time is short. You never know when you're going to go. You never know when your death day will be. It could be tomorrow. It could be at this moment. So please, just make sure. Make sure that you're right with God. Make sure that you know Christ. because. Life is totally meaningless. Life is meaningless apart from him. I'll be honest .com.